December 21st, 2012. Yeah. Amen. Mine a lot of the church was like, well, what's going to happen? Blah, 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 blah. But there was a spiritual release. And people don't even realize what was happening back then. The, the, the Maya calendar goes through what is called a long count. It's almost 26,000 years. But that long count is when the earth goes through the whole, what we call the zodiac, the, the Hebrews call it the Nemesareth, the study of the stars. Daniel understood the stars. As a matter of fact, when the wise men came, they came from where Daniel, uh, they believed that the wise men were actually taught descendants of Daniel. Yes. That Daniel knew when the Messiah would come by the study of the stars. Yeah. They believed that they knew that. So the, there's rabbis that teach that, or the, there's those rabbis that teach that have been converted over to Christianity, that, that Daniel was a, a unit. Daniel didn't have a family. He didn't have a wife. So he stored all of his monies, all of his finances, everything that he had, and he passed it down through all generations, and he said, this is the date that you bring everything I have to the Messiah when he's born. So, when the wise men came with the treasure, that was actually Daniel's money. That's not legal, listen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, when, when you get a revelation of that, look how beautiful it is to understand the prophetic. Glory. Maybe Daniel seen, he said, I want to be part. I won't be alive, but I want to be part of when that happens. So what did they follow? They followed the star. They understood there would be an alignment of stars. So our planet has moved through that, those constellations. There's 12 constellations. The four major constellations are the man that holds the water. We call it Aquarius. The pagans call it Aquarius. Yeah. They, the pagans have changed everything. Why? Yeah. There's a battle for truth. Yeah. Right. Amen. There's a battle for truth. Amen. The second constellation, it goes through Leo, the lion. Yeah. Which we call Judah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Then it goes through the, cur uh, uh, the, the, the uh, third major sign along the way, is the scorpion that will used to be the eagle. Amen. Look how the enemy changes things. So now we have Scorpio, the scorpion, scorpion, but it used to be an eagle. And then the last of the constellation that comes through is the ox, Taurus, the pagans, the bull. That's the four faces of the shepherd. And see, the, how in the world did the Mayans Understand the, the, the movement of our planet through the constellations. How could they have known this? They said that they were taught by people that came down and taught them. Uh, yeah, right. yes. wow. You can call them aliens if you want, but I know they're fallen angels. Come on, right. So December 21st, 2012, that whole calendar comes to an end. Everything was pointing to them. Now, I'll give you another revelation. Give it. The rabbis say that when the fallen angels came down, they came down on Mount Hermon. Mm -hmm. Now, you get those books, uh, there's two brothers out, Putnam and uh, Horn. Yes. It's called uh, Exo Vaticana, it's one of the books. Yes. And the other one is called uh, Petros Romanus. Uh, the Roman, I don't know if you, I hate to say some of this stuff. The Roman Catholic Church, mm. the, the fallen angels, the, the ones that came down, the actual fallen angels, they were called the Anak. It says that the Anak, they birthed the Nephilim. Yes. That was a half-bread between man, yes. and, or, or between people and, and these fallen angels. Yes. That's the story of Noah, as it was in the days of Noah. Yes. So it shall be in the coming of the Son of Man. So here we're learning that these fallen angels want to come back. Yes. 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 Come on! Oh, wake up! Wake up! The time is here. Well, I'm going to tell you the time yeah. is here. It's here. It's here. Because the mountain they came down is Mount Hermon, the scripture says. Mount Hermon is 33.33 degrees east longitude of the Paris Meridian and 33.33 degrees north of the equator. 33.33 degrees is 2,012.9 nautical miles. Or, if you convert it to the date, it's December 21st, 2012. Amen. So the scripture is actually telling us when they would come back. 
Amen. That's a secret. That's a mystery, brother. But we have eyes to see and ears to hear. Because we have the Holy Spirit, so we should know that it's time. Our battle's not against these demons. See, we've been fighting with demons. But God is getting ready to send his church into battle with fallen angels. With principalities. Because the scripture said our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And to fight a prince, you got to be a prince. Amen. This is an archangel class. If you look at the word of Hebrew for art, it literally means chief. It also speaks of a leader or a commander of an army. If you go to the New Testament, the apostles were called fathers. Right. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. The word apostle means also a general or a chief of the army. Yes. The apostles were heads over legions of soldiers. All right. Principalities control legions. Right. Remember when Jesus cast the demon out of the man at the tomb? Yes. Yes. He said, I'm legion. I'm being controlled by a principality. Oh, yeah. So God's going to send his princes Amen. to fight the enemy's princes. And I'm sorry that those princes like that can't win this battle. God's bringing people into divine revelation and knowledge. Amen. Paul said, I pray out of all the things I pray that you get the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It is a spirit. It is an anointing from the anointed one himself. King. And the Lord is not going to give us Habakkuk 2. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge, the knowledge, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. You can't come into the glory till you have a knowledge of it. Amen. He is not going to give knowledge. Just, he's not going to give the glory just to anybody. That's right. Because some of our attitudes, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know you rubbed me in the wrong way. <laughs> we got to be so dead to ourselves that, that we can handle the glory. Amen? Hallelujah. See, stand up here, brother. I'm going to give you two teachings and then we'll try to get into this. Stand over here. The Bible says you and I are living stones. It says that the new Jerusalem is made out of living stones. That's the ephod. That's the garment of the priest. Yeah. Breastplate. That means you're covered. Your breastplate of righteousness is God's priestly garment that went on the high priest, which is the Hebrew alphabet. Amen. So, it, i got to take this off. Burn it up. Hallelujah. Fire God. Amen. Amen. We're all living stones. Amen. So when the tabernacle of Moses was built, come here, brother. Really. Thank you. I was trying to make it all nice. Amen. Come on. <laughs> make up, Kevin. It says that you are living stones. When they would take the, the stones in the temple and they would form fit them together, you can't even fit a razor blade in between. Wow. You know that? That's right. So they would they would take those stones, go up and down. Okay, help. And they would rub them together like this. And they would rub those stones together till there was a nice tight fit. What do you feel? What is it? Friction. Meaning, God brings other people in your life that are his stones to bring friction into your life so that you can be a nice tight fit.
The garment that they would cut is called the garment of fine linen. Right. What is the garment of fine linen, symbolic of? Christ alone. The book of Revelation says that the bride, she wears the garment of fine linen, meaning she's a priest. Right. She wears a garment of fine linen, which is for the righteous acts of the saints. That's right. Righteousness is not how good you are. Righteousness in Hebrew means how much understanding and revelation that you have. Amen. It means right understanding. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Believe it or not, if you learned anything from me tonight, you're walking out here righteous no matter how bad you are. <laughs> Amen. That's not legalism. <laughs> so if you're what? Because if, if you try to be, what's your name says? Norma. If you're trying to be a good girl, I'm going to quit swearing. You don't swear anymore, do you? Okay. <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> yes, she is. Yes, she is. The tongue's a flame of fire. <laughs> should, should I ask you anything? else? No. <laughs> Drinking and all that. Yeah. Hopefully it's all gone, right? It's gone. Amen. Amen. But you know what? By you quitting all that stuff, just makes you self-righteous. Uh -huh. uh -huh. But now if you get revelation from the Holy Spirit, and he comes in here and starts changing your ways of thinking, Amen. and all of a sudden that stuff is taken away by the Holy Ghost, now you're purified Amen. by the sanctified. By the Holy One Himself. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now His fruit is in your life. And see, we're trying to do this on our own, and we were never meant to. That why, that's why the priesthood has to come and change our ways of thinking. Yeah. And if you have a mentality that it's all legalism, you never. How can you be changed? You're working overtime, Father. You're working overtime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to the principalities trouble. Isn't it interesting? I, yeah. I, 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 I went after a principality at the beginning of the service and they started manifesting in the service. Yeah. Take it easy, y'all. Take it easy. No. Now, I, I'm telling you something, saints. <laughs> this word, this work we're getting ready to step into, the glory. Yeah. You know how we look back at the Jews, how they miss Jesus, and we think, boy, they were foolish? Yeah. Though the church and the glory is going to look like back on us the same way. Oh. Yes. Because when we transition over, the work of the kingdom is going to be so powerful in the realm of the glory. Right, right. And it's going to cover the whole earth. Amen. It's going to cover the earth. Yes. And we're going to see things that nobody has had the privilege to see. Je Jesus said, you will do greater things than I. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. And we think, well, we let people to the Lord. Uh -huh. The greater works. Greater works. The greater works we haven't seen yet. He said, there's going to be a day there's going to be greater works. Yeah. Who wrote most of the New Testament? Paul. How much of the New Testament did he write? Two-thirds. Two-thirds. Two-thirds of the New Testament he wrote. Paul said, I'm born at the wrong time. Yes. Oh, right. He said, I'm a man born out of season. I'm a man born at the wrong time. I would rather give away this two-thirds of the New Testament to somebody else and be born at the end of the age. Amen. When the glory comes into you. Lord. Amen. Let me get back to my menorah teaching. Mm. The menorah had two prongs in it. They put the wick made out of the garment of? The priestly garment. priestly garment, which is? Fine linen. Fine linen, which is? Symbolic of? The wedding. Righteousness, right understanding. Amen. So they would put that wick in there. What, what did the virgins do at the end of the age? They trimmed their wick. So then over the church. The church. Amen. Are you are you buying oil for your lamp right now? Amen. Are you getting the teaching right now? Because if you don't think you can go teach it. Ah, come on, Holy Spirit. It's a cold water, brother. Hallelujah. The front. The prongs, they would put the wick in the prongs and put the wick down into the water, into the oil, the anointing oil, right? And the anointing oil would be drawn up through the wick. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. It would be drawn up through the wick. I, if I get anything in my hand. Oh, that's for the Holy Ghost. We're going to really get it now. <laughs> the, the, the anointing oil would go up through the wick, and that's where you would get the fire from. Amen. What's the, what's the oil symbolic of? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. He's 
drawn to what? The wind, which is righteousness. righteousness. Right understanding. The Holy Spirit is the teacher and the counselor. He's drawn to people that have right understanding. Yeah. Put the wind and the anointing together, you get the fire of God. That's why we get a fire back in the church. Amen. That's why the church doesn't have fire today. Because we're just believing everything. Yeah. But them days are changing. Amen. Amen. So I counsel you Amen. to buy the oil. Amen. Amen. Get right understanding. Amen. And, and the Lord is, thank you. And the word Lord is bringing prophetic revelation. Yeah. So anybody that tells you you don't need to know mysteries is anathema. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Who teaches the mysteries? Apostles, Apostles and prophets. And prophets. The, pro the prophets are what? What else are they? They're generals and their fathers. What's the last prophecy of the book of Malachi? I will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. children. The hearts of the children of the fathers. Least I strike the earth with a curse. Meaning that the, if the children do not listen to the apostles, the fathers, who teach the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom. I, I'm not trying to curse nobody. I'm just telling what scripture says. But I'm not going to divert that for nobody. tries to say that in divine revelation there contains no mysteries properly but through reason rightly developed all the dogmas and the teachings of faith can be understood and demonstrated from rational principles let him be anathema cursed and damned to hell go down a little bit I'll just give you a little bit go on go ahead is that it I didn't put the rest on praise the Lord all right, let's go back to the other one. Abraham. So, All right, just a you and I, just, I haven't even taught yet. I know. And I've been waiting. Amen. Wow. Look at what you already learned. Yeah. Look. Thank you. The parable of the virgin. What's a virgin? Somebody never had intercourse. What? No understanding. Jesus said the seed, the word for seed, the Greek is the word sperm. The sperm is the word. So a virgin has never had the seed. I'm sorry, Jesus talked it that way. If you got an issue with that word, you need to take it up with him. Right? But when a woman was married to a man, in the Old Testament, God gave the law on how a man and a woman got, were married. There was no ceremonies. There was no banquets. <laughs> When the man and the woman got together, was there was an intercourse, they were married right then and there. Right. Yes. Why? Marriage happens in the impartation of the seed. Right. That means you're waiting for the marriage supper of the Lamb, and you're already in it. Come on. Bring it. You know that picture, that, that long table? Yes. Nobody's sitting at it. We're all yeah. waiting to go to heaven to get there to get on that table. See, if you understand the Hebrew, marriage, the wedding feast, came after, after. the consummation. That's right. right. Oh. Meaning you've got to get consummated. You've got to get married before you go to the feast table. Amen. And Jesus says it himself. He said at the end of the age, he said, I will gird myself up and I will sit down and feed you. The word gird means I will, I will wrap my loins, meaning I'll give you the revelation of the word. Right. I'm going to feed you. The revelation of the kingdom before I return. Wow. Every parable teaches us that. The vineyard. The king went, right, the, the, the servant left, come back to the vineyard, he said, I'm not paid. Parable of the talents, come back, I'm not paid. We're not paying. But Jesus already paid the price. Amen. You know the word in Hebrew for salt for sin means dead. So if there's sin in your life, that means you got dead. But Jesus paid the debt on the cross. So I don't have to. Really? Then why did Paul say, every day I go to the cross? Every day I pick up my cross. Every day I got to die to myself. Where did Jesus die at? Golgotha. What's Golgotha mean? Place of the skull. Place of the skull. It's a death to our way of thinking. It's putting on the mind of Jesus. said, I have no place to lay my head. He had a pillow. He had a napkin, a thing full with money. He about a pillow. He wasn't talking about a pillow. He's talking about a body. Hmm. 
to put the mind of Christ onto. A mature body that could carry the glory because the scripture says the government shall be upon his shoulders. Mustard seed faith. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, be ye if you have just a little bit of faith, you can speak to a mountain that'll move, right? Amen. Well, let's all go out back and see who got just a teeny bit of faith. Let's move these mountains back here. Put them where I live, and I'll live on them. Hallelujah. Amen. But see, in Hebrew thought, a mountain is also your mind. That's right. In Hebrew, the word for mind also means a mountain. What's the, what's the seed? It's the word. So if you have a little bit of revelation, you'll say to this mountain, be removed. You'll get rid of all your carnal thinking by one little imparted seed. The word of revelation of God in you will remove a whole mountain of carnality out of your life. You're getting that system. Amen. It's exciting, isn't it? Praise God. So, we're, we're, we're moving mountains tonight. Praise God. That's right. We're moving mountains. God. You're created out of the dust of the earth. So out of your earth is a So John the Baptist came to make the way straight. To bring down the mountains, to exalt the valleys and get the crooked ways and straight. It's my job to beat your head down so we can put Jesus' head on you.
It wasn't bearing fruit. What's the tree symbolic of? Jesus. What's the root symbolic of? God. The Torah. Torah. Did God pull the Torah out of the ground? No. He cut them off and engrafted us in. And he didn't get rid of Torah. So why are we teaching that he did? Yeah. Matter of fact, there was an early church. They were called the Manicheans. They worshipped this guy. He said God was angry. God was mad. And that everything was under grace. And that he, you, the, everything was taken care of at the cross. And so you didn't have to. You didn't have to. Uh, you didn't have to. You just had to follow Jesus. And see the Lord and save you. They were around 300, 400, I think, A.D. But... When they came out with that theology, they were rebuked by the early church and considered heretics wow. for teaching that the Torah was done away with. Wow. Hello? See, if, see, I just happen to believe there's a war going on. Amen. And that war, that war is for truth. Amen. And these demons do not want to spend eternity in damnation. They will do everything they can to keep themselves out. They're going. And we should be doing everything we can to keep ourselves out too. That's right. Because there's, there are things that the New Testament is teaching us. And because we do not understand the Hebrew, we don't understand the Old, we cannot switch over to what the New's really saying. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. That's right. But we don't understand that. We're, we're trying to just stay in the new without asking the old. Right, right. And just like that menorah symbolic of the church, how many of you just found that out? So if you read the book of Revelation, it teaches you that. Wow. It is the church that's moved into the glory. Amen. Amen. The virgins didn't have enough oil in there. Yeah. Menorahs. See? The Lord is giving us a revelation. He's teaching us things. He's, he's trying to get us free up. Amen. 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 Yes. You shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. free. Because if you're in sin, you're in debt. And the Lord wants you out of debt. Amen. What, did, what did Paul say when he said, let's go on to perfection? Be perfect just as your Father in Heaven is perfect. Amen. Well, we can't be perfect. I don't know. You're calling God a liar. Did he say be perfect? Yes. Did his disciples say be perfect? Strive to be perfect. Yes. But if you look at the word perfect, tell the oath of the Greek, it means, it means to be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says, I speak to them that are perfect. And that word also means mature. He says, I speak to them that are perfect. And not the wisdom of this age, who are the rulers of this age that are coming to nothing. I speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the ages for our glory. And he said it would be the mysteries That's the book. that would bring us back into the glory. Right. Amen. So if we're not going to understand them, how are we going to come back into the Holy of Holies? That's good. Amen. Right. See, the, whole, the glory is just not some inanimate thing. No, it's real. It's the power. And I'm going to tell you something. Everybody that I've ever seen sit in these, my church, every pastor, every theologian, everybody, rabbis, they're hungry to know God. Yes. Yes. And guess what? Yes. The Lord delivers. Yes. Yes. You'll sit in religion and you'll die. Yes. That's because it's the dead letter. Come on. But if you get the revelation, it'll bring you back to life. It yes. will resurrect yes. you. Yes. Amen. Yes. So you get an amen? Amen. Yes. Alright. I, I want to... I, yeah. yes. <laughs> Five minute break. <laughs> Let's go. I want to. I want to give you a little bit about Abraham. Is that all right? Yeah. Do you realize that you and I are in a covenant right now to fulfill the Abrahamic covenant? Did you know that? Yes. Does anybody know what the Abrahamic covenant is? Nations. 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 There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of churches <laughs> running around and saying they're just waiting to get out. But there is a covenant that God created with Abraham. Uh -huh. That that covenant was to rule the nations. Right, right. He gave a name change. He went from Abraham to Abraham. Abram to Abraham, the father of many nations. <laughs> many, it is a divine covenant. Yeah. Contract. Wow. Does anybody know another word for covenant? Marriage. Yep. Uh -huh. 
Meaning God married himself to Abraham. Amen. And we're going to go back in Genesis 17, verse 5. This is where the church is coming to. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. Every name speaks of? So when God changed his name, he changed his fruit, his character, and his function. There was a man by the name of Jacob. He wrestled an angel at a place called Penel. Penel means face to face. That angel, when he wrestled Abraham, an angel will take you out with the word of his mouth. Yes. He's not playing with you like a little child and he's your dad. Right. Angels are powerful beings that can destroy right. principalities, even bring down nations and remove them instantly. Yeah. Wow. Amen. It was angels that were sent in to deal with Sodom and Gomorrah. It was angels that were there in Egypt. Angels you did not mess with them. That's right. Let alone want to wrestle them. <laughs> yeah. But the word angel, it does not mean like I would come to Kent and I would say, hey, Kent, I'm going to tell you something about so-and-so. And the Lord told me to tell you this. That's not, that's not the work of an angel. The word angel in the Hebrew, it literally means it's a message of hell. Meaning it just does not come and tell you something. It is that divine character of the Father. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So when an angel comes, he's bringing the fruit of the Father. Amen. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Amen. So when he is revealing things to us, when those angels are showing us things. Amen. Amen. In that process of them showing us a message of hell, we begin to be transformed. Amen. So the Bible says that God is an enmity with a carnal mind. Meaning your carnal mind, he's fighting it. So he's sending his angels in order to kill your mind to bring the fruit of his spirits, yeah. Amen. the nature of his son in you. Amen. Can you understand that? Yeah. Yes. Can you understand that? Amen. So it's not about you changing, it's about you letting the Holy Spirit bring the revelation and change you. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. But angels... Clearly, you're working with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if we understood this process, we wouldn't be saying stuff like, no man knows the day or the hour. Yes. Amen. Because you would have some wisdom. Man doesn't, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, man does not know the things of God. But God reveals them through His Spirit. Amen. And with the Holy Spirit, you and I have the Holy Spirit, as God reveals to us what He's getting ready to do. But man will never know what God's getting ready to do because he does not have the Spirit of God. Right, right. That every time God reveals something, the angels don't know what God's getting ready to do. Man does not know what the angels are getting, or what God's getting ready to do. And the Son, the Scripture says, didn't know what the Father. Why? Because in the process of revelation, if God would reveal his plan and, and release those angels and release the Holy Spirit to come and tell Jesus what he was getting ready to do, Jesus would speak it into existence through the spirit of prophecy, but it wasn't time for that yet, so the Lord held it back till the revelation of Christ would come at the end of the age, because if he would have spoken it then, you and I wouldn't be here today. Do you understand that process? But no man will ever know the things of God because he does not have the spirit of God. Paul says that. So God holds things back until His timing comes into fruition, and when that we're in, a, we're in God's perusia, we're in His timing, we're in His reign of time. Amen. There's an appearing happening. That appearing comes through revelation to start setting things in motion. I'll say things. I do it all the time. I said, "The Lord's telling me this," and you'll watch it on the news within a week. Am I telling the truth? Pastor, am I telling the truth? Am I telling the truth? Amen. I'll say things and they'll just come to pass. Why? Because I, I, I'm in tune with the Holy Spirit. I'm in tune with that heavenly host. Though I, I, I'm so hungry to know the Father more. And I'm saying, Lord, reveal yourself to me. It's not like I want to I wanna know God more and by knowing Him more. He tells me what He's getting ready to release. He's telling all of us that. Amen. Amen. We're at the end of a cycle 
Paul said, there's, there's a, he said, for those, Hebrews 6, for it's impossible for those that have tasted the word of the age to come, that they depart to renew them again in repentance. For it would be as crucifying Christ the second time. I'm paraphrasing that a little bit. Paul said there's another age coming. Right. But he said there's another word coming in that age that's different from the word of this age. Right. Yeah. Oh. Now that word for age, Jesus, it's used for when Jesus came in. But that word for age also in the Greek mean, can speak of the world. So when, when the Lord said there's another age coming, he's also saying there's another world coming. Wow. And so, what do we have? We have new agers still in what God's plan is. Yeah. So we get all, ooh, he's talking about a new age. Yeah, I am. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I can care less about Satan's dominions. Come on. I'm going to speak what the scripture says, and I'm going to say it whether the, the, the church wants to hear it or not. Amen. Because it's there. It's in scripture. It's I can prove it. Yes. So when we talk about this new world that's coming, it doesn't mean this world's ending. It just means we're moving from this church age into this kingdom age. Glory to glory. The book of Revelation is about the end of the world. It's about the opening of the veils. Right. Amen. And it's time we see it. The way the early church. Jesus used the word apocalypse all the time. Every time you get a revelation, the word apocalypse is used. Go read it. Amen. So, Abraham... Jacob, he wrestles an angel at Penel. Penel means face to face. And he would not let that angel go. The angel says, keep letting me go. He says, let me go. No, he says, I'm not letting you do it until you tell me your name. What's his name? Israel. His character and his function. What was the angel's name? His name was Israel. What's Israel mean? To rule with God or to be a prince with God. We're all becoming Israel. Amen. 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 If we're going to rule with God, we're a spiritual Israel. I do believe God's going to do something with the natural Jews too, but this is in the spiritual realm. So if we are Israel and God is going to rule through, oh, come on. God is going to rule through you and me. Amen. I said it earlier. In the ark was the manna, Aaron's rod that budded. The tablets of stone, and it was covered by the mercy seat. Jesus said to them that overcome, the first three chapters of the book of Revelation, he's speaking to the menorah, the church, to them that overcome. I might give some of the hidden manna. So the manna is no longer in the ark, it's in the overcomer. What's the word manna mean? Hidden word, hidden bread. I'm going to give the overcomers hidden words, hidden secrets, hidden meat. Guess what you're eating? Yeah. Manna. It's angel food because you got to be coming. John the Baptist ministry for this end time move. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So you're eating angel food. Jesus said to them that we're coming to give a rod to rule the nations. So Aaron's rod is no longer in the ark. It's in you. So the man is not in the ark. Neither is the rod. Jesus said to them that we're coming. I'm going to make them a white stone. I'm going to write on them a new name, which no man knows but them and my father. The tablets, the commandments are no longer in the ark. It's in you. Right. Jesus said to them that overcome, they were going to sit with me on my throne. What's his throne? The mercy seat. So now, you've become the mercy seat. What does that mean? That means you've become the ark. You have become the throne. You have become the place for his glory to be revealed from. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Get your Bible. Yes. <laughs> the word martyr. Does anybody know what the word martyr means? Martos. It means to have your head removed. Yeah, right. Do it again. Doesn't mean to get shot. Doesn't mean to get cut up. Doesn't mean to be hung. It means to have your head removed. So, why does God want your head removed? So he put his mind on there. So if you're going to be a good sacrifice, he wants you to be a martyr. He wants your head removed. Go sit down. The same word is used for the word witness in the Greek. Amen. So the word witness is the word martos. It means this. It means to have your head removed. So Jesus said, I'm going to send you out as my martyrs, my witnesses to Judea, Judea, Samaria, the other parts of the world. I'm going to send you out with your heads off. Because you're going to be living sacrifices dead to yourself and have my mind on you. Amen. See, there's other things that are being said. 
But if we throw away the Old Testament, we don't understand that because all of a sudden, here's the, here's the, the tabernacle that's all in operation in the book of Revelation with the feasts. Amen? How many of you understand the feasts, the Hebrew feasts? How many of you have studied them? Two, three, four, five. How many of you haven't? Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> we have two sets of feasts. The early rains and the latter rains. Early rains. The word rain in Hebrew Deuteronomy chapter 32, the Lord says, let my revelation fall as the rain. rain. How's Jesus coming back? In the book of James it says he's coming back as the former and latter rain. rain. So he's coming back as revelation. Wow. The book of Revelation. The bread. Amen. So he's coming back as rain. The early rain, there was three feasts, or four feasts. Passover, first fruits, unleavened bread, and Pentecost. What happened at Passover? Crucifixion. Jesus was crucified. crucified. What happened at first fruits? Right. He was resurrected three days later on the feast of first fruits. Yes. Not Easter, that's a pagan holiday. Right. That's right. Come on. That's true. And I don't even want to tell you the whole Easter for me, Steve, yeah. but it really yeah. means. No. I will tell you this, just to ruin, just to ruin your Easter and your Christmas. Yeah. Tell the truth. <laughs> Both of those feasts were created by fallen angels. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They are not stupid. Yeah. Yeah. They, see, when I look at them, I used to think, well, I don't celebrate it that way, but I realize these fallen angels aren't stupid. They put these things in place for a reason. Right. Yeah. And if I'm going to be obedient to God's word, I guess you, I, he wants me obedient to all of it. Yeah, all, right. of it. Yes. all of it. All right. Amen. So, hallelujah. Yeah. So on the feast of first fruits, which came three days after the feast of Passover, Jesus is crucified on Passover. So God tells us today he's going to crucify him. And he, he is the Passover lamb. It's a typology. The right. lamb is really Jesus. So when they bring Jesus out to inspect him, right beside him there's a bunch of pillars all over the temple. They're expecting Jesus to eat also, the Bible says. Why? Because he's the lamb. Right. But if you don't understand the typology, you didn't understand what was really happening. Right. Three days later, right, he's resurrected. That's on the feast of first fruit. So God told us the day he'd be crucified, and then three days later he has another feast. And he says, this is the day of the resurrection. I'm going to resurrect him too. Amen. So if you understand the piece of first fruits, you can understand God was already telling us when he was going to resurrect his son. The Muslims don't do that. The Buddhists can't tell you that. No other religion but our Bible shows you what God was going to do before he did it. Thousands of years before. Thousands. Thousands. Amen. Say it again. Fifty days after that, we have a feast called Pentecost. Pentecost. What happened on Pentecost? The church was birthed. The fire came down. Hallelujah. Maybe God told us the day his son would be, would be crucified. He told us the day he would be resurrected. And he told us the day he would birth the church. Amen. At Pentecost, what happened on the first Pentecost? Does anybody know what that event was? In the Old Testament? Upper room. God came down on Mount Sinai. Right? He came down in trumpets. And he came down in fire. And he talked to Moses and gave him the Torah. The Torah. And then he came down on the mountain. What's the mountain symbolic of? The mind. The mindset. 1,500 years later, he came down on the mountain again. And he clothed with tongues of fire. God told us in the old one was going to do in the new one. Oh, we don't need a new Hebrew. He told us exactly the days, the times, and the hour. So if the early rain was all about the first coming, what do you think the latter rain is about? The second coming. The second coming. Amen. The feast of trumpets. The world will fly away. <laughs> the feast of trumpets are the prophets speaking to the church. Isaiah 58, the Lord says, lift up your voice like a shofar, a trumpet. The Lord says to Jeremiah, bid you a prophet and a trumpet to my people. John in the book of Revelation, when Jesus spoke to him, he said he heard a voice as a trumpet speaking. So the trumpets of the book of Revelation that are being blown are the prophets speaking to the church like tonight and telling the church, wake up. Because it's getting ready to happen. Amen. 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 Can you see that? Yeah. In the middle we have the Feast of Atonement. That's considered the marriage feast for the Jews. 
Right. Hallelujah. So the trumpets of the prophets saying, it's time to get married. It's time to wake up. Amen. Amen. And, and the ancient days, the friends of the bridegroom would come into the, into the village in the middle of the night. Jesus is coming as a? Thief in the night. Uh, for, let's go back. The father of the bride and the father of the son would come and make an agreement. They would drink a, cup, a, a glass of wine on that to seal the covenant. Every covenant was sealed with wine. Jesus said in the last supper, he said, I'll say this wine when I come back. Meaning the covenant isn't done yet. That's why I was going to get into Abraham. That's the final cup. That's called the cup of Elijah. Amen. Wow. Every Jew today, they still put that cup out at Passover. And they leave it on their table for Elijah to come and drink it. They missed Elijah when he came because he came in the spirit. Of, he came in John the Baptist. Amen. Matthew 17, though, Jesus, after he's coming down off the Mount of Transfiguration, as it says, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and let them up behind Mount. Six days from what? Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 17 and 16 are not in chronological order. We don't know why that scripture says that. I'll tell you why it says it. It's prophetic. We're at the end of six days, or if a day is equal to a thousand years, we're at the end of six days, or six thousand years, we're stepping into the seventh day. We know chronologically from the time of Adam until now, we're at the end of at the end of six thousand years or six days. You and I are going up a mountain. I'm trying to get up into your mountain so that you have a transfiguration. Does anybody know what the word transfiguration is in the Greek? Metamorphos. That's where a butterfly goes into a cocoon, and, or a, a caterpillar goes into a cocoon, comes out a butterfly. The DNA of the caterpillar and the DNA of the, of, of the butterfly is two different DNAs. You cannot find any DNA in the butterfly that was in the caterpillar. So Jesus goes up and he's transfigured. If you look at that word in the Greek, it means that he put on his glorified body. He was giving us a glimpse. Wow. Yeah. Of what the glorified body was going to look like. And at that, at that, at that time, Moses and Elijah comes, the prophets, and the, uh, the prophet, and the, the revelator, Moses. Right. Amen. Maybe right. the two things you have to have in the transfiguration is Torah and the prophets to interpret the secrets of Torah. Amen. 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 Wow, wow, wow. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> That word, you know the scripture says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Guess what that word is? Metamorphos. That meaning, you're going to come into a glorified body when your mind is transfigured. Right, that's right. That's right. I want my mind transfigured, brother. Yeah. Amen. You want it? I, I mean, this I want thing my head go first. first. Yeah. This thing got to go first. Amen? So the Lord's transfigure us by the renewing of our mind. But obviously religion hasn't gotten the job done. No, it's not going to get the job done. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. I don't even want to go into the book of Jude or any of that stuff. But we're in the time of the transfiguration. Anyway, Jesus is coming down. The disciples said, Jesus, why does that? We know you're the Messiah. We just seen Elijah. We seen Moses, man. What an event. You, we seen your glorified body. As soon as they see the glory, what did they do? They fell on their face like they were dead. Right. Same thing that happened to John when he seen him in the book of Revelation. Bam. You ain't going to run up and give Jesus a hug in the glory. Oh, man. If, if you're not in the glory, you're going to fall on your face as a dead man too. Yeah. Right. Amen. Because anything that's not in the glory is dead. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Church was all asleep. Obviously, the, 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 the cry went out, wake up, because the bridegroom's coming. Obviously, somebody knew Jesus was coming back. Yeah. Obviously, there was people that understood it's time for his coming and appearing. So anyway, he's coming down the mountain of transfiguration. Jesus says, for I tell you the truth, Elijah has come, past tense, and they did to him what they wished. But I tell you the truth, Elijah will come, future tense. Amen. And, and restore all things. Oh, Amen. That's a powerful word right there. Yeah. Yeah. Because when he, when, and, and then it says, and they understood, he was talking to John the Baptist. I mean, John the Baptist is already dead at that point. Wow. But Jesus says there's another coming in the Elijah Ministries. And he said, they're going to restore all things. Can anybody tell me what that word restore means? Back to the Garden of Eden. That means we go back before a fall. <laughs> Meaning these ministries. 
are being brought onto the scene yes. to bring us back into the glory before the Lord returns at the end of six days. That means they have to be in the earth right now. Amen. And I'm sorry, a lot of our theologies, our eschatologies, do not make room for the Elijah Ministries. That's right. Come on. All, all of our, most of the theologies I read, you cannot, where, where, where's Elijah in this? Where's the spirit of Elijah that's going to get us ready? That's what you've got to ask yourself. Because to the Jews, you know who they're looking for? They're not looking for the Messiah to come back. You know who they're looking for? Elijah. Why are they looking for Elijah? They missed him. They missed him the first time. You know, there's a thing. Because they killed him. They, they, they don't think that they missed him. They killed the guy. You know why? Even Elijah was hid from them. He was a secret also. He was a mystery also. Because he was a man by the name of John the Baptist. Right. I'll, I'll preach that later. Hallelujah. I'll give you this. See, John was just not the Elijah ministry. He was preparing the way. They killed the messenger. The Jews have a school they call the School of Elijah, Brother Philip. And they said this, in the School of Elijah, they teach this, that Elijah will either come at 4,000 years of biblical history or at 6,000 years. Then he come in 4,000 years. Yes. He did, and what did they do to him? So now they're saying he's coming again. We better not do this again. Amen? No, they're not saying that. They just... The, amen? They're saying that, that he's coming. We, they, they, they figure this way. This is the way the rabbis think. This is the way the whole Jewish people think, right? They, too, they also believe that the Messiah will come and teach a language of secrets. Now, I had a hard time with that at first, but then I said, it's got to be in the New Testament. I can show you that it's in the New Testament. Amen. Uh, who says I'll show this? Who says that? You said it? Okay, I'll show you that. Amen. Not yet, though. Remind me. So, you're learning the language of Messiah. The bride. How did he teach what he walked? Terrible. He taught just like I'm teaching you right now. Was he legalistic? No. <laughs> <laughs> was that? Hey, man, that's a good point, huh, brother? <laughs> I, I come up with good points every once in a while. Hallelujah. So, Jesus said this Elijah ministry is going to come. So the rabbis still this. They said, well, if we know when Elijah comes, we, and we can pick him out. We won't miss the Messiah. Because they'll lead us to the Messiah. Right. Amen. He'll lead us. Those ministries will lead us to the Messiah. So if we get it right with those guys, then we will we will make it. Right? right. So we know they made a big mess up last time. Yeah. Amen. And the rabbis also teach this. So right now they're looking for these Elijah ministries. How many churches do you go to that they're looking for the Elijah ministries to come back now? No. One. No. This one. Huh? Just right there? Your church? Oh, Amen. So that hey, and we get around, but that is a major problem. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we're not looking for this ministry to come who Jesus said himself in Matthew 17, we'll come. Mm. And restore, bring everything back into the glory. We're missing a major part oh, of end time events. They're all asleep. They're the whole thing. Yeah, amen. And that's, you know what, sister? I'm glad you said that. They missed it last time because they missed John. Right. They missed it because they missed John. Right. Do you think the Lord would just let us in and throw them out? Would that, would our God be just? To do that? No. My Bible said God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. Amen. 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 So you better find out who the Elijah ministries are. Amen. These John the Baptist ministries. They're coming in the spirit of Elijah. Because they're preparing the way of the Lord. They're making his way straight. They're knocking down our mountains, our mindsets. And, and they're making a, a straight and narrow way. Now, I'll, 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 teach, I'll say this. Another thing the rabbi, another rabbi say to me, get on a plane. I see rabbis on the planes all the time. Amen. I'm like a pit bull for the rabbi. Like a rabbi, you walk up to them on the street, they'll try to get away from you. But on a plane, they can't get away. 
And they can't get away with it. And, and you, know what I, you know what I love about it? Is they'll go, you're a Christian? They, they like have this major problem that I'm teaching them the Torah and the secrets of the Torah and I'm a Christian. And I had a rabbi one time say to me, he goes, how can you be teaching these secrets? I said, because I have the Ruach. And I have the Messiah. Amen. Yeah. Who's the teacher? That, that is it. That's a problem. Wow. See, we're, we're evangelizing the wrong way. See, if we understand the... And I'm going to say this. There is nothing in Judaism, nothing that is wrong. Praise God. Zero. You cannot miss anything that God's going to do if you read Jewish text. Amen. Wow. Praise God. You want that soft? Amen. Amen. So how did, them, how did they miss him? Because they didn't believe the teaching of the secrets when he came. That's how they missed him. What did they call him? Crazy. He's teaching all these secrets. He lost his mind. His mother said he's deranged. He's lost his mind. Because he was teaching all the symbolism. Why? Because the Messiah was supposed to come and teach a secret language. What was Jesus doing? Teaching the secret language. Jesus, why are you teaching the people symbolisms? The disciples asked him. Is it because the mysteries of the kingdom, the secrets of the kingdom are in the parables. Yeah. So if you understand the parables, the trumpet is the prophet. The seed is the word. The sword is the word. You already have a lot of the knowledge. Yeah. You just need to ramp it up. <laughs> Why? Who teaches secrets? Apostles and prophets. Apostles and prophets. Thank you for listening, man. <laughs> the Lord will do nothing in the earth till he first reveals his prophets. secrets prophets. to his servants, the prophets. prophets. So if you're learning the secrets, guess what you're getting ready to be? Prophets. Yeah. He's going to have a prophetic and apostolic church. He is. No doubt. Amen. The apostles are princes. They're generals. They fight. We're going to take our sword. You know, you know, the word parable, you know what the word parable means? It means to pull your sword out of the sheath. Oh. Man, you don't even got your sword out until you understand the parables. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.